Hi, this is Rene from the Qubit GmbH. I'm a founder and CEO of Qubit, and I'm delighted to discuss with you the merits of video spectrometers and uh, snapshot spectral imaging. And in this talk, I want to introduce you to the overall advantages of this uh, technology. And yeah, let's have fun. As you can see on that slide, the market volume of line scan industrial cameras is pretty small compared to industrial snapshot cameras, um, which um, dominate the market by 10 billion market share. But if you think a little bit further, uh, you will see that there are much more applications uh, where uh, snapshot systems are um, integrated, like in digital cameras or in mobile phones or such. And for us, it's really the question, why shouldn't that be the same for the spectral imaging market? But what is snapshot imaging? Um, I think there's some confusion in the market at the moment. So for us, it's pretty, pretty simple. And uh, that's from the Wikipedia page. Uh, Snapshot spectral imaging is recording of all bands and all pixels at the same time, and that's it, plain and simple. However, there are several systems around uh, which um, simulate uh, snapshot uh, spectral imaging, but they are not. And the only one I could find is uh, the linear variable filters where the market communication is really decent, and so thank you for that. But for the other ones, I really want to emphasize I hope we can agree that this one is not a car. <laughs> so, but there are challenges of snapshot spectral imaging and we don't want to uh, mute that challenges because uh, we, have to, we have to really tackle that challenges. So the first one is we have a compromise in spatial and spectral resolution with snapshot systems, uh, like you see here. So the spatial resolution of snapshot systems is always like this ship resolution divided by the bands. Furthermore, we have compromises in spectral filter quality and spectral reproducibility, uh, which come due to the um, uh, high complexity of the systems. And uh, we have a lot of miniaturization going on, which produces significant manufacturing tolerances. Um, today, I want to introduce the Altus X20 to the market. Uh, which is the first camera ever which achieves 350 to 1000 nanometer uh, um, spectral wavelengths range and has 164 channels and the constant 10 nanometer full with half maximum. And you might think that's uh, like a spec sheet uh, which some marketing guy wrote and I want to put some numbers uh, later on behind that claims. But first, let's look into how does the Altus X20 help to overcome the limitations of snapshot spectral imaging. Um, first of it all, we have an unprecedented sensor size. So the Altus uh, X20 works with a 20 megapixel sensor, uh, which is pretty unique in the whole market um, compared to all other approaches and gives you this extra oomph <laughs> in uh, in regards of the um, spectral resolution uh, compromise, which you have to do. The second one is we have an unprecedented filter quality. So when we first, I mean, we designed that system and um, we were pretty confident, but when we were first got that measurements of these real uh, spectral response curves of our filter quality, we were quite stunned. So what you see here is we have first uh, um, a wavelength range from 350 nanometer to 1000 nanometer, completely continuous. And what you see second is we have 90% transmission over all channels um, with a 10 nanometer constant full width half maximum. That's uh, kind of the system I always wanted to have. And to top everything off, there's a blocking in each filter of OD4. So we nearly have no crosstalk. It's 0.01%. And uh, last of it all, we have an unprecedented reproducibility because that's what we really heard from our customers. They bought one system and they wanted to transfer the application to another system. and It just didn't work. So what we really had to do or tackle is how can we build hundreds of systems with the same quality? And that's the answer to it.
So here we have a, um, a, um, a measurement of 110 system uh, accuracies and we hit one channel, that's the channel 530 for, um, uh, uh, for, for instance, with 0.8 nanometer standard deviation. And that's pretty good. And that's not just that one channel, but it's all over the place. So if you look at real world data, of the Ultras X20, then I want to show you some lab data. This is just a boring um, measurement of a 532 nanometer laser, solid state laser, and we just compare the full width of maximum of that laser. And what typically is complicated with um, push boom, uh, <laughs> sorry, snapshot spectral imagers, is that you have deviations over the place. So what you see here are the places, and here you see, yeah, we had the same uh, um, uh, maximum everywhere. And if you look a little bit more closely to the data, then you will see that we have found the laser wavelengths. It's 531.09 nanometers, which is 0.89, uh, 0. Point whatever, <laughs> wrong. So it's within one nanometer deviation. But can we achieve that in the field as well? So um, there's one nearly, uh, one very nice feature in the outside, this is the O2 absorption, which is exactly at 760 nanometers. So we went outside, made a beautiful image of the Ulmer Münster, and you see a bird flying here, which is only possible with snapshot spectral imaging. And what you can see here is we perfectly reassemble the OT absorption at 762 nanometer. Please ask us for some demo data, and you can see it yourself. So. Thank you very much, and it was not a lot of time, but I hope we had um, we have given you some um, uh, worthwhile information. Please get in contact for us uh, with us with, for live demonstrations, application support, and technical support. Goodbye. <laughs>